The most powerful rocket ever built is set to attempt its second test flight on Saturday. SpaceX's Starship received clearance for a second launch from the FAA Wednesday. Liftoff was initially scheduled for Friday, but it was delayed to replace a piece of control hardware. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood joins us now. So, Bill, why is this flight so important to SpaceX and, and NASA in particular? Well, you know, to take NASA first, they're counting on the upper stage of this rocket, the part of it they call the Starship, to carry astronauts back down to the surface of the moon in NASA's Artemis program. So this rocket's got to get flying reliably before NASA can send their Artemis astronauts back to the moon. SpaceX is counting on this rocket really as the company's future. Uh, it is such a huge machine. They can launch an enormous number of Starlink satellites and others, as well as heavy payloads to the moon and beyond, even to Mars. So both of them, SpaceX and NASA, have a lot riding on successful flights, plural. It's not just a test flight. They have to have multiple flights work as planned. So it's all about this sense of reliability and consistency. So let's take that a step further. What makes the Starship rocket really stand out from others? You know, we could talk about that all night. Um, it is <laughs> Let's gargantuan. do it. <laughs> okay. You know, it, it, uh, so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so well, interesting. You know, it, its first stage, its first stage generates 16 million pounds of thrust. And to put that in perspective, you know, the Saturn V moon rocket generated 7.5 million, and NASA's Space Launch System moon rocket, its big new rocket, is about half the power of this super heavy Starship combination. Uh, so it is a truly monstrous rocket. Nobody's ever built anything this size before. And they're designing it to be reused, both stages, fully reusable, multiple launches from both Boca Chica, Texas, where this launch is going to happen, uh, and then again at the Kennedy Space Center, where they've also built a Starship pad. So I tell you what, you know, it's really going to be something to see when they, when they get this thing to work. So I know you did reporting on this uh, earlier. There was this mid-air collision. We've got some video we're going to play here. So what changes have been made since? Well, quite a few. It wasn't really a collision. They had multiple engine failures. The two stages failed to separate. And it went into a catastrophic tumble about four minutes after launch back on April the 20th. Uh, the Federal Aviation Administration required 63 corrective actions Elon Musk, the company founder, says they've implemented over a thousand upgrades and improvements since then, and they believe the rocket is finally ready to get the Starship into space. But again, it's a test flight, and uh, until it, until it's not over until it's over, I guess is what I'm saying. So we know the first stage got off the ground last time, but we never saw the second stage perform. We'll see what happens uh, when they launch it this time. So that takes me to the final question. How long will it take to know if this launch is successful, and if it is successful, what's next? Well, it's gonna take the thing about uh, nine minutes to get to space. So the first stage fires for a couple of minutes to get out of the lower atmosphere. Then the Starship separates and goes on to space. It's gonna loop around the planet. It's not gonna go into orbit. It's gonna re-enter the atmosphere and fall back to the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii. Uh, and if it all gets that far, if both stages can do all of that, they'll consider this a major success. Uh, down the road, of course, they're going to want to be able to fly these stages back to landing so they can be refurbished and reused uh, and, to, and to continue pressing ahead toward designing this stage to be able to carry astronauts back to the moon. So quite a lot on both SpaceX's plate as well as NASA's. Bill Harwood, thanks for your expertise and analysis.